Hey everyone, now touring around in Florida with my dear friend Sandy Moore today. We went today to Bach Gardens. She introduced me to a super cool plant I think we need to talk about. It's yeah. the fern that grows behind us. It's Resurrection called fern. Resurrection Fern. Let's take a peek. When you travel enough in one area, you often take for granted some of the things that are just in your face all the time. I've traveled enough in Florida, you see the things such as the Spanish moss that drapes all over the trees, which isn't even actually a moss, it's a bromeliad. But you often see this plant here. This plant is Pleopapeltus polypopoidioides, also known as the resurrection fern. It's a rather unique name, but in reality, not many plants can come back from the dead. Once things are dead, they tend to stay dead, but not the resurrection fern. It's earned its namesake for seemingly to being able to defy death. This species can handle desiccation far beyond most. During most of the year, when moisture is abundant, this fern will turn a vibrant green. However, when conditions of drought or seasonal drought come, this species is able to lose up to 75% of its water content, and maybe even up to 97% in times of extreme drought, and still survive. Now, we did a video in the past on a species that has a similar type of attribute. Seligianella lavidophila, often called the Jericho Rose. And this is a species of, of, of like a, a spike moss that can just completely desiccate, but it's a desert plant. And then once waters come back, the, plants, the plant just thrives again and regrows. Now, as by the namesake of resurrection plant, to be truthful, this plant never actually dies. Sure, it could eventually die, but in this case, for its namesake, it doesn't actually die. But it does dehydrate very substantially. Now, most plants, just by comparison, most tissue plants can only lose about 10% of their, of their water content before they would die. So for a plant to lose 75 to 95% of it and still survive is absolutely remarkable. But when they do dehydrate, you see here, is the fronds just basically dry up and the rhizome of the plant, which is the long stem that attaches it to the tree, that retains the life of the plant. So the lifeblood is all contained within, and then when the rains come again, it pushes it back to full life again. As you can see in this image, in the times of drought, the plant will curl its bottom fronds upward. This allows them to catch moisture and rehydrate the plant quickly when the rains come again. Now, how you ask, is this, this is plant able to survive? Well, this fern is able to produce a type of protein called dehydrins that attract water. Now, in most plants, the lack of water would cause cells to collapse on themselves, tearing, fragmenting, eventually dying, a very violent death. The presence of dehydrins enable resurrection ferns cells to maintain their natural shape and to stay alive. This plant is truly remarkable. Once the rains come, or even minute exposures to water, the plant can fully rehydrate and return to its normal state in a very short time period, say 24 to 48 hours. Following substantial exposures to water, there's an immediate increase in its water content upwards of 50% after the first hour, 65 to 70% after three hours. And when it regains its moisture, the fern can then re once again become photosynthetically active, increasing its metabolism and the release of organic compounds that provide nutrients for the symbiotic bacteria that allow them both to thrive. Absolutely fascinating plant. The resurrection fern is a native plant to the state of Florida. However, the plant has spread up the eastern coast as far as New York. It is also established throughout the Caribbean, Africa, and northern South America. It likes to grow in moist, shady habitats, 
but it can grow in a variety of places because of its extreme doubt tolerance abilities. However, preferred hosts tend to be the large live oak trees, primarily for their very coarse bark, as you see here. This bark retains moisture the best, which allows the fern to ramble and thrive. This is a rather small fern, growing to about six to nine inches maximum. As it's a true fern, it produces rhizomes or stems that help it to spread, but it also enables it to ramble and cling on to its host. But like all true ferns, it reproduces via producing spores. And the spores are cast throughout and they're wind dispersed. And this is a, a claim to fame for how this species is able to thrive and spread so rapidly. The resurrection fern is an epiphyte or an epiphytic fern, which means that it grows on top of a host, be it other plants or structures, say fence posts or rocks. But being an epiphyte, it does not take anything from the host. Truly a marvel the resurrection fern. And as you might expect, with talents like this somewhat of a superhero being able to come back to life, you can imagine this has definitely caught the attention of scientists the world over. This species, this plant has been used for a bunch of traditional medicinal or botanical uses. For cutting, treating cuts, aches, coughs. In Cuba, it's actually been used to treat liver ailments. However, any scientific studies to find any curative properties with this plant, they found none. Other unique facts about this species is that in 1997, the resurrection fern was actually taken into space aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery to watch its resurrection in zero gravity. I think the plant's absolutely fascinating and coming to an area like this and seeing them in place it's considered the most globally widespread species of all epiphytic ferns, and the population is very stable. So, I think it's wonderful. And I hope you guys enjoyed my little foray into this wonderfully unique, albeit very common plant, the resurrection fern. As always, my friends, thank you kindly for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care. Uh -oh.